Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, today I bring to you the part two of the market breadth uh, series. So if you haven't seen part one, uh, the link should be there in the description. Please do look at that. Uh, this is a continuation. So to start off with, we need to consider market breadth as an oscillator, like an RSI or a stochastics, which has got an upper limit and a lower limit. You won't see it going to infinity or another infinity other ways. So it's not a, a linear one, it's an oscillating one. So taking an example from the market breadth sheet, right? Uh, let's take the first two columns. That is the number of stocks which have moved up 4.5% today versus number of stocks which are down 4.5% today, right? So this is the basic day-to-day -day sh extremely short-term perspective of the market, right? These are the moves that we look for as uh, breakout traders, uh, we, we really want these numbers. So how do we interpret this now? So let's say if we have a very high number of stocks, let's say 400, 4.5 up today versus 24.5 down today, right? That would, I would call that as an extreme, extreme, extreme reading bullishness, which means that market could be quite extended. So if I am holding uh, stocks at that point of time, I would tighten my stop loss. I would get ready to start uh, exiting my positions because normally when such extreme reading comes, the tendency of the market is to revert to its mean, uh, which means that there could be, since we are trading high momentum stocks, uh, the reversal could be uh, pretty sharp. So uh, I don't like leaving too much profit on the table. Similarly, uh, when the number of stocks which are down goes to an extreme reading, then there is a very good chance that the market might reverse from here. So at that point of time, we look for reversal trades, right? There's no point in trading reversals when the market is bullish and there are breakouts are working and vice versa. There is no point in trading breakouts when the entire market is, when the overall market is extremely bearish, right? We look for bounce from the oversold area. Right? That's the reversal trade. And Let's say if they both are some somewhere in the middle, like in 70s, 80s, both of them are same number, then that means that the market is choppy and it's sideways. Uh, breakouts might work, reversals might work, but what essentially you do is you uh, reduce your expectation. So maybe if you're a 5-hour trader, you might want to reduce to 3-hour during this time frame. Right? And a lot of 2022 was this. In the same way, the other columns in that sheet can also be interpreted. Uh, and keep uh, a time frame in mind, right? So for example, if it is number of stocks below the 50 day, you're talking about a slightly longer perspective, a three month view of things, right? Uh, so that's this, uh, and you can extend it up 200. Uh, another breadth oscillator that you can look at is uh, number of stocks which are making 52 week high versus number of stocks which are making 52 week low. So now we'll look at how does this actually behave uh, it's some numbers. I don't understand what's going on. The best way is to look at, let's look at the index chart. We will look at the Nifty chart here as a representative of uh, the entire market. And let's understand when we had extreme values, how did Nifty behave? Because if Nifty falls more than two, 3%, the stocks are going to correct for sure, right? So. Let's understand, let's walk through 2022 as an example, and let's identify how I had interpreted the uh, values which were uh, coming out for these numbers and what steps did I take. Let's look at what happened in January. So in January, we had a set of very, very high numbers for the 4.5% up today. The market was on fire, every stock was going through the roof. And whenever you get such continuously stacked greens, uh, you need to understand that these are getting into the extreme values. If you look at the negatives, they're going down and these are going up. And uh, the number of stocks up 20% in the middle, so slightly medium perspective is also getting heated. Uh, and so let's understand what happened in the market. So we, the market bread sheet is already telling us things are getting heated in this week. So let's understand how the market worked. So this is 17th and what happened on 18th? A big 
bearish engulfing and the market dropped approximately 8% from that date. Okay, so this is one example. Now let's move on and look at another critical low. So there was a low made on the 7th, the 7th and the 8th of March and let's look at market bit what was telling us. So you can see the market bit was having extremely oversold readings. So the number 4.5% down was really extreme and this was very oversold. So this is where you know you look at reversal trades and you can also see that it's a nice uh, bullish angle thing here. So it corresponds to the candlesticks reading if uh, anyone has read my book. So this is how efficiently this is finding the tops and the bottoms, right? So once you run the entire uh, a few years data with uh, Nifty chart on cyber side, you'll get the proficiency. And another example is uh, the top which was made here, right? Again, very, very, very high extreme values. The first warning came on the 1st of April itself for us uh, with a very, very extreme value. But then this figure was holding it. So it, in the next few days, it saw an ex explosion upwards. But at some point it had to give. So it started correcting from this date onwards. And from there, market fell 12%. So this is the kind of uh, inference that you can make from the market per sheet and time your purchases or time your trades, right? So there is no point in you trying to trade the breakouts when the market is going down like there is no tomorrow, right? What you can do is, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that when we look at this space here, you would see uh, sideways values in the market per sheet. So here you can try uh, for longs, right? And uh, and reversal trades uh, and at this point again the market breadth is extreme so you can try for reversal trades so when it is the market breadth is improved from here that's when the breakout would start working so from this phase to this phase right the breakout in the many stocks would have done 100 percent or more during this time frame so try to catch those stocks and uh, when the market is giving overheated signal and the, you have getting corresponding candlestick signals also it's it's no brainer you know just take profit and run away so swing trading is a seasonal business you need to understand that and this tool really helps us to stay away when the market is not in our favor and it tells us when we can increase our size so that the odds of our trade being a successful trade is higher so if you have got a good trading strategy this is a must have addition to your arsenal of tools so that you have a higher chance of success. So if the environment is better, uh, the growth will be higher, right? It's generally universal law. It's the same thing with market. So if the overall market is bullish, then the higher chance of breakouts getting sustained, you are looking at 10 hour, 20 hour, 50 hour trades uh, at that point of time. Right? And when at the top, we are looking at cutting down our positions uh, selling into strength, right? And this is one example of the market bit tool. So, as I mentioned, you can also use the 52 week high versus low. That is, that gives a signal very late, but it is very, very reliable. And uh, the breakouts uh, which happen after the 52 week high crosses above the 52 week low, uh, they tend to uh, provide 70 to 80 percent return. So, that is, uh, so there are. It may not be that the stocks might immediately break out after a bottom has been made. Sometimes it takes one or two months for the stocks to break out when a secular bull market uh, is set in place. So I hope the efficacy of this tool is very clear and I would encourage you to take the market with sheet and open up the Nifty chart and look at each significant top and bottom. That's how I learned this and then try to interpret the values which are coming and what is happening to nifty right uh, look and keeping in mind what happens at the extremes so uh, do try it out and uh, comment below as to you know how you went about it and uh, good luck uh, i will see you in the next video now